Today we answer the most important question in Linux and I don't a Unix based operating systems, whatever. Um, here's the deal, guys. There are a lot of people who watch the channel, uh, new new users, we'll, we'll, new friends, um, who see stuff going on and they don't often know why we do the things we do. Uh, so in this video, I want to respond. I want to respond to a little comment that's representative of many comments that I get on my channel. Um, this guy actually posted this comment on a video I did on Graph. If you don't know what Graph is, it's a document compilation. It's a built-in document compilate compilation program that is on Unix-based operating systems. Um, it's not important for this video, but it's it's a universal question that actually touches on many important things. So anyway, he asks, uh, "I'm really new to Linux, so could you tell me why this is an advantage over something like a GUI text editor, a graphical user interface text editor, like for example Microsoft Word, LibreOffice, basically the same thing?" You mentioned something about extensibility. Forgive my inner ignorance, lol. That's to total Zoomer thing, ending a sentence with lol or haha with no period, that's classic. Anyway, um, so why why do we not use on this channel LibreOffice or Microsoft Word? Why do we insist on doing things in text files? In the case of Graph, again, Graph, you write something in a text file with a little markup showing what is supposed to be bold, what's, what's supposed to be a header, and then you compile it into a PDF. Why would we ever do that in a text file? Why, why couldn't someone just write a, a GUI interface, a graphical user interface for that? Um, well, the, the answer is well. The, the answer is simple, but you sort of have to be shown it. You, it. you can't be. Sometimes you can't be explained it. Let's put it this way. You know, first off, you know, if you do something, and this doesn't just apply to document compilation. I want to be clear. This is a universal fact of the Unix philosophy. Okay, we like extensibility, whatever this buzzword means. Uh, it, extensibility is actually a classic buzzword. Um, but anyway, I am going to go. Just as an example, so I have a directory here where I have all of my assignments that I did in college and, and theses and, and you know papers and stuff like that. Uh, specifically, actually first let's go, I have a thesis right here. So my thesis, I didn't do, do my thesis in uh, Graph, I actually did it in LaTeX. So all of this jumbly, jumbly stuff here, uh, this is actually my thesis. You can see the text here. Uh, you can see there's markup, so it's showing you what is supposed to be italic and things like that. It is automatically citing things. That actually automatically produces citations and stuff. But what is the advantage of doing stuff in a text document? So just to be clear, first off, this is going to be compiled into something that looks like this. Okay, so this is what it ends up looking like. But why should we do this in text? Well, here are some things, just, just to prime your brain, here are some kind of things you can do with text. Uh, for example, uh, maybe I want to know, did I talk about Spanish in my uh, uh, my thesis? I, I don't know, did I? Well, I can actually just, instead of even opening the file, I can actually just search for the word Spanish using the command grep, okay? Uh, so for example, I could search for that, and it actually gives me, it gives me every single line that has the word Spanish in it. Spanish is nice and highlighted here. Uh, or let's say, uh, let's say I want the words only, okay? I can actually take the words only, and I can count them up in WC, and that will actually give me, okay, 17. You mentioned Spanish 17 times in this document. Or other things you can do with text documents. Let's see something else. I know there's some people who are very anal. They think that you should not refer to Spanish as Spanish. You think that you, they they think that you should refer to it as Castilian or something like that. So another thing we could do is we could run a sed substitute command and we could replace Spanish every instance of Spanish with Castilian. I think that's how you spell it in English. I'm not quite sure, but anyway, you could replace every instance. Of course, to do that, you would run it with the I option, but uh, I don't actually want to replace it. Instead, I'll just grep out the results so that we can see that in each case, all the times that we had uh, uh, Spanish, now they've all been replaced with Castilian. Okay, that's, that's one little thing you could do. Or, I mean, there's more stuff you can do. Um, let's, say, uh, let's say somewhere, if I'm just in my classes, archive here. I want to I remember there was some there's some little paper that I wrote about uh, Bengali, the the language Bengali. I could do something like this. I could grep for Bengali. Now the I option here happens to be search for case insensitive, so if it's capital or not, or if it's all capital or, or no capital. 
Uh, and I'm going to search recursively through all these folders. And I'm also going to give it the capital I app option. That's so it ignores binary files. It ignores PDFs and stuff like that. And I'm going to search everything here. And it actually shows me, OK, here are all the situations where the word Bengali is used. Actually, let's, let's clean that up. Let's only use uh, the word itself. So now we basically get a list of all these files. Oh, the one I was looking for is this one. It's this paper that I wrote on uh, uh, you know, how scope is tied in the, the scope rules are tied into porosity rules and stuff like that. So I can actually look that document up. Um, so you're just seeing very superficial things. So I'm, I'm replacing stuff with said, I'm looking for things with grep. But the thing to remember about text files is none of this you can do with, with um, uh, Microsoft Word unless you open up the document and you go into Microsoft's designed user interface and one of the options happens to be there. Whereas if you're just using plain text, if you're abiding by the Unix philosophy, you actually can do much, much more because any program can look at text. All of these commands that we're looking at, you know, sed, uh, grep, uh, tr, uh, awk, all of these programs can actually just run on text. So they can, you can get stuff from them and do stuff with them. Now it's not just me running things on the command line, mind you. Uh, this could also be like anything you run on the command line, you can also automate. So for example, I can easily automate commands that I run here, or I, I could, you know, I, I did a second ago, um, uh, this thing to replace, uh, if, I, if I ran this command, it would replace every instance of Spanish with Castilian. I could actually run that on all the files I, in this directory if I wanted to massively update you know, bu a bunch of files at the same time. Uh, or I could have rules more complex than just a simple replace or, or stuff like that. Um, so when you're doing, the, now all of this might be gobbledygook if you're new to Linux. I don't know anything about these programs. I don't know anything about grep or set or all these scary words that don't even sound like English words. Uh, but the issue is once you once you take those first steps, once you realize that you can do stuff like this, you realize there's a massive world out there of not just command line programs you can run, but also you know being edit, able to edit something in Vim. Okay, Vim is one of the most powerful. Uh, I mean, not just Vim. I mean, the important thing is there's no individual pro program that makes editing makes editing text good. But so many programs have different abilities. So for example, in Vim, I have. Uh, a couple scripts that I have built to interface with it. For example, I have this thing here. This is a compiling a compiler script uh, where if I'm in a, a LaTeX document, if I run, uh, what is it, comma C, if I run comma C, it runs this script right here. Actually, there's an error here. I, the packages aren't up to date, but that's not important. Um, but normally, if I, if I run uh, co uh, the, this compiler script, it will compile either a LaTeX document or uh, you know a markdown document. It, I might even compile a program or something like that. Uh, you can actually build scripts into your into Vim, into your text editor, into the thing that you're modifying stuff by. Or the same way, I have another thing that's like uh, op output, and this is like okay, well this opens up the output of this file. So this is the PDF file it compiles to. I guess that error wasn't that fatal or something like that because it still produced this stuff. But anyway. Um, so that's the kind of thing, like when you're doing, well, this is what extensible means. That's what I'm getting at. Um, when you're dealing with text, you're dealing with something that's extensible. It's not just something that you have to use with Microsoft Word. It's something you could use with any command line program. You could actually edit text with Microsoft Word if you're suicidal, like a plain text file. Um, you could log into a server with SSH and modify something. And you might be saying, I don't know what any of this stuff is. I don't know, it's scary, the scary hacker stuff. I don't know anything about it. But the thing is, once you start take, taking those baby steps, you realize this world is much easier to live in. You can much easier, uh, easierly make a, uh, a an extensible work environment that just sort of, it, it's not even something you work on. It just comes from the fact that, oh, I want to do this a little bit more efficiently. Oh, I want to be able to script this. I want to be able to automatically change all this kind of stuff. I mean, I do stuff really radical in Vim. I mean, I, uh, let's say, uh, let's see, what's a good one? Uh, let, oh, let's just go to, no, we'll do the Hermetic Corpus. Okay. So, for example, I have, um, uh, I, I w I've been doing like biglottic texts of, uh, you know, I want to, in LaTeX, produce, uh, let's say I have, uh, let's, is that, yeah. So this thing you have here 
is actually a biglottic text. If I compile this document, let me actually open up that so you can actually see it, okay? So uh, this is what this looks like, all right? So on one side, I have Greek text, and on the other side, I have English text, all right? That's something that I do here. And how that actually works out is um, uh, all I originally just copied a text, you know, the Greek text and the English text, and I automated putting them in the correct uh, order in Vim, like taking the paragraphs and interspersing them. All of this I did mostly automatically. It needs some manual oversight, but in general, it's something very easy to do. You cannot automate this kind of stuff in Microsoft Word. It's forget about it. Forget about it. even if you have some cool looking. Uh, I, I don't know. Even in Graph, well, you know, of course you can't modify Graph compiled forms, but you can do, operate on Graph text. Okay, and that's the important thing. Um, so you can do magical things like this took me uh, I was driving, uh, you know 331 pages of this like constant biglottic text I want to say I did that in a series of hours and that was just uh, I was on a road trip um, And uh, I was doing it in the back of the car uh, it, it you just needed the manual oversight vim actually does most of it You can just program macros into vim that do it all magically by itself. Okay, um, so anyway, e even more than that, actually, there's another comment I got. I got this a couple of years ago too, and it, it, it was someone um, actually explaining why writing things in text is so much better, why abiding by the Unix philosophy is so much better. I actually remembered this post from two years ago, and when I thought of, when I saw this comment, I remembered it. Um, so this guy was responding to someone who I think was uh, commenting on a video that I did on Beamer, which is like a LaTeX way of compiling, uh, uh, or maybe it was our, our Markdown presentations, but it was some kind of way of compiling uh, a text file into a slideshow, which is very easy to do. And he says, what he said about Microsoft PowerPoint uh, applies to LibreOffice Impress, uh, Impress too. There are other advantages, which I consider way more important. It's text. You are virtually guaranteed to always have access to your past data. Good luck trying to get access to your LibreOffice and Press presentation in 30 years or your Microsoft PowerPoint presentation in 20 years. It's text. You can manage it with Git. It's text. You can look at diffs. You might not even know what a diff is, but you're going to want to know. Uh, it's text. You can use the power of your text editor, for example, to make regex replacements. Oh, try doing that in Word. You can use uh, scripts to manipulate the content. You can find files by their content. It takes up very little storage. Like all this kind of stuff. That is what extensibility means. It means you don't have to use one file in one particular way. You have a, a, a huge toolbox of tools that can do all, I mean, you can, you can even nitpick over which is the most efficient way to modify a file. Should I use Vim? Should I use a sed command? Either way, you have those options. You don't have those options with Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is going to be constantly changing, not just Microsoft Word, it, anything else. It, it, like, um, uh, you know, uh, video, ed video editors that are hard to modify, uh, just any, any kind of file format that is, that is further and further away from text it is harder and harder to do stuff with. And that is why you have to keep things like this simple because it makes it, it makes your life simpler if your, your format is simpler that you're using. That's why we do it. We don't do it contrary to popular belief. A lot of people come on this channel they're like, you just do that to, lo to look like a cool hipster hacker, man. Oh, like people come, to you, people come to you and they're like, oh, I think you look cool, so you must be doing it to look cool, which is total nonsense. If this did not make my life way easier, I would not be doing any of this crap. I mean, it looks, I mean, I, again, I could open up my thesis, like the, the source file looks scary. Oh no, there are a bunch of uh, headers and stuff that, uh, you know, I don't know how they work. But the thing is, like this is, it is so much easier. It is so much easier to ha be able to do this in pure text be able to modify any of it. Oh, and guess what, LaTeX, it also has the ability, since it's building off of simple format, it does your uh, references automatically. It does like all of this kind of stuff automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Like, you know, I, I, I have never seen a bibliography in my life. I've, I never have to do one of those ever again because the, all of this kind of stuff, it's, it's done automatically, all right? So anyway, hopefully this is getting through to you that there's a reason that we do what we do, extensibility, it's, it's not a meme. It is a meme, but it's not a meme meme. You know what I mean? It's, it's a meme because it's real. It's not like one of those, oh, it's just a meme. People do it. No, like th this is why we do what we do. Okay. All right. So hopefully that makes it clear to some people. Just get your toes in this kind of stuff. You can look at my, watch my old videos on everything. You'll, you'll get it. You'll get the gestalt of what you're supposed to figure out. All right. That's about it. See you guys next time.